There you goes. How are we all keeping? Hope you're doing well. Picking up from where we left off uh, two weeks ago. I haven't done too much with this guy. Um, so this week, I'm going to try to get a little bit more of the sculpting done. Last week I was focusing a little bit more and just kind of chatting to you guys and answering questions and such. So this week we're going to try and get some more of the sculpting done, I think. Uh, still obviously answer as many questions as I can. And uh, let's have a bit of fun with it. Um, let me know. I have some just nice chill kind of music playing. Let me know if you're going to hear that because I'd rather just make sure that way if you want to, you can listen to your own music or something. Just keep mine muted on your end and that you can hear me okay and everything. So, yeah, I thought I'd just, just have a bit of a, a chilled one this time, try to get some sculpting done. I'm going on holiday tomorrow. Well, I say holiday. It's a, a staycation. I'm going over to a place called Kerry in, in Ireland. It's a, it's a nice place, as well, uh, part of Ireland, if any of you ever visiting. Put that on your list, places to see some... Uh, it's very Irish uh, part of Ireland. No, that sounds funny, but so uh, today's my my last day of my working week. So I'm trying to just wind down a little bit. It's been very, it's been busy. It's been busy, and I haven't got to sculpt too much. So kind of at that stage we're just doing lots of like the technical sides of things blend shapes um, retopology all that sort of thing Just let me know in the chat guys if you can hear me okay. I'm gonna have to fiddle about with the settings a little bit so just to be sure. There's no issues. Um so I'm thinking this week I might try and um get his head dynamesh together and maybe make some of the clothes. So, first thing you can see, because like we talked before, we've got that dynamic subdivision on. So that's something that we're going to want to clear up before we uh, start collapsing things, because obviously we want to have the resolution now. So this is where we start adding the adding the uh, subdivision levels and get this guy welded together at this stage I think like you can see like I added a little detail there in the nose I'm not so sure like at this stage something I do sometimes is maybe if I want to have some detail in certain areas um, say maybe I want to have like some creases in here or something like that I think I can add that at this stage and then that will carry in to the dynamesh. Thanks so much, John. I hope this is you. Um, so that yeah, that'll carry on into the dynamesh, or you can kind of do it at the dynamesh stage. But sometimes it can be helpful to do it here because it means, like, say for example, just here, I could just I don't have to worry about when I'm putting in a crease there or whatever. 
don't have to worry about messing up this eyelid. But I'm not sure if I want to go. I kind of really want to. Well, I don't want to go too detailed for sure. I want to keep these guys quite like kind of clean and smooth looking. Hey, Joel, what's up, man? Cosman, Cosman, you wrote to me on Instagram. Sorry, bro. I actually seen it. I was in the middle of doing some work, and I just put it down, and I forgot to get back to you. I will get back to you on that. The the brushes. Um, well, okay. So I'm trying to think of what brush packs I've actually got, because I I tend to just pick some up randomly here and there if I see something. The Arb brushes. There's the, the Arb um, pack. Uh, you can find that. I'll see if I can get you a link. Um, I actually, I think I put these on the chat last time. Um, but to be honest, I, I buy packs very rarely. And the reason being is... Uh, there's the R pack brush in there. I just put it in the uh, in the chat there. You can see it here. Put it on top of me. Uh, so there's this, which I kind of used to use a little bit more. I used to particularly one brush because uh, it was kind of it had a nice feel to uh, I'll show you here. The R cracks. this so it's kind of like if you like a stylized you could describe it as like a stylized Damien standard I think it can be quite good for hair like for just if you're doing stylized hair you want to put like uh, streaks down stylized hair and stuff um, but the reason that there's, a, there's a, a skin pack there you go you can see it there Pablo Munoz. Let's see if you zoom back out. It's like a, he has a skin pack, which I've I got because I thought I'll find an excuse to use that, but I actually haven't found an excuse to use it yet. To be honest, um, ninety nine point nine percent of the time I'm using the brushes native to my or to, sorry to ZBrush, the uh, the Move brush, the Damien Standard brush pinch inflate that's pretty much uh trying to think is there any other ones i use that's pretty much it oh h polish that's pretty much all the brushes that i use um so it's uh you know it's not like photoshop for example is a little bit when you're painting in photoshop specifically painting especially it's a bit more important like your brushes because you might want texture and stuff in your in your brush strokes but in zbrush um you know like that that other brush the crack the hard crack brush like i could kind of do that at the same time a bit of a smooth uh, so it kind of makes it a little bit faster I guess if that's the specific thing that you're looking for but uh, oh hey Ixi from the uh, discord he's a regular there really talented sculptor it's great to have you aboard uh, yeah so so um, I don't know if everyone just for anyone who hasn't seen the previous two streams this is a, a redesign like a quick sketch I did um, I'll put them up in here for some of the um, for the characters in um, Cluedo I kind of redesigned them just really quick sketches 
uh, just enough to kind of get me going in sculpts. Uh, so we're starting with Reverend Green and uh, at this stage we're just after kind of blocking out the the main shapes and figuring out blocking out the head and figuring out the shapes in the head so I might just jump in and uh, dynamesh this guy dynamesh his head I won't dynamesh his body just yet so we just gotta figure out now. Just gotta take the add some subdivisions rather than the dynamic subdivisions so that we can get the the higher res and dynamesh those. That needs to be flipped. That's something to be careful of if you have double on. Because you wanna collapse something and then find out that it's inside out. So we'll just flip it. Double on and that as well, yeah, see? See it there, that's just the eyelashes. So I had to flip the wrong way. But I had double on, so I couldn't see that it was in the wrong direction. The eyelids is obviously, I'm not gonna dynamesh that to the head, so it's not the end of the world, but it's, about, it's, it's good to keep an eye on. Oh yeah, this was something I wanted to do. So I want to just in inside the area here just to give it something in there. Um, let's use our our new extrude edge. Honestly, one of the best things that's been added. The best thing that's been added to ZBrush, such a small thing, but super, um, super helpful. Um, monkey with butter. <laughs> uh, yeah, dynamesh time. Yeah, so we'll actually get to do a little bit of sculpting in the more classical sense of the word. Um, can says hi Paul how are you in production how much time they give you to finish one character start to finish uh, so it depends uh, on the importance of the character of course so obviously if it's the main character it'll get they'll give you a lot longer uh, if it's uh, a simple background character then less time needs to be spent on that often I, often in in where I work they ask me now that depends on your position as well so I'm 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 the lead character artist uh, in the studio I work in so um, they'll often ask me for time bids on how long characters will take to complete um, so again Uh, it's not that it's not necessarily a case and it it's it's not exactly a straightforward answer because it really depends on the studio the caliber of work like are you working on you know a low budget uh tv show or game or film or are you working like you know uh, you know with the likes of pixar or disney or uh you know epic games or something like that in which case um, the budget isn't obviously as tight and so a bit more time could be spent on these things and there's yeah uh, the schedule is not as a uh, tight knit so um, it's a it's a really difficult question to answer like I'd love to be able to just say two days or three days and just give you that simple answer but um, there's a lot of different things at play um, and also it depends on you know like if I'm for example if production ask me how long will something take I'll also have to consider the artist that the task is assigned to B 
because maybe they're junior and they're going to take longer or maybe they're a particularly experienced senior and I know that they can get it done in two days or I know that they can get it done in a week depending or more uh, depending again on the actual you know maybe it's a hero character or it's just a side character that won't take long so there's so many things that come into play it's not something like if you were getting into the industry um, of course if you're getting into the industry and you're at that standard where an industry like a studio will hire you then you can pretty safely assume that your sculpting is at a decent level um, at least good enough for whatever the studio is that's that's hiring you in which case um, you can I would say at that point then assuming you're starting out junior you know that's when you can kind of start to focus on your workflow and um, your workflow although it has implications on the final look you know like for example if I was if my workflow was to do this in Dynamesh it would affect it would look different at the end this this workflow lends to this style um, but uh, probably the biggest part of your workflow is how quick um, you can work so that's and that's that gets more and more important and again though it does depend on the studio i have to say the studio i work for is quite nice they, they, they don't put a huge like obviously there's schedules that we need to try and keep to um but they are quite you know lenient they, they, they're, they're not constantly over your back trying to is it done yet is it done yet or you know you don't necessarily get in trouble if unless you were to continuously be very very slow but that's like any job if you're not doing the job uh, well you know you get kind of a performance you can get like a performance improvement program or something they call it I've heard of that before on a couple that's that's cross industries that's not an animation or a games thing it's just a business thing a pip I think they they call it where they uh, they start to monitor your performance which obviously you don't really want to get into that position I've seen it happen to good people though it's not necessarily something that only happens to people who aren't good So you can see I'm just creating that shape there just to get some sort of break up but um you know I can just dynamesh that in to the final shape. Give me something in there. I don't want it I don't want to move this out because I don't want them to uh well I can use you uh, remesh by union. Uh I can show you that in a second. Because Dynamesh, if things are a little bit too close, like if, if say your fingers are like like quite close, especially say the knuckles are closer a little bit and you Dynamesh, often if it's in a particular proximity, it will weld that gap um, where Remesh by un Union is handy because it doesn't actually do that. So that's one of the pros to Remesh by Union. Um, that's quite nice. Our Sean's in. Hey, Sean. Okay. So. So just to make sure that there's no gap there. You can see this is still playing, so I need to sort that out. So 
due to this kind of workflow I uh, depending like if I'm making stuff for the face I, I generally don't use dynamic um, thickness so the, in the, the one of the newer tools um, under dynamic subdivision you've got uh, dynamic thickness so if you have a plane like I could have uh, show you real quick so you can add dynamic thickness and that's just purely true dynamic so it's not it's kind of not not really there and um, you can hit apply and that will apply this to it but um, because I don't because I don't want to not realize that something's dynamic and not find out until I've merged things together I tend to always just you know go ahead and actually just extrude it because at the end of the day like if I don't like that it turns out that it's wrong for some reason I can just control shift and click to hide every other polygroup and then I have a shortcut key for delete hidden so I can get rid of it like super quick so it's not it's not you know it's not uh, necessarily saving me a lot of time anyway uh, for this workflow but for stuff like props and stuff I probably would so I need to lower this because I don't want this eyelids to be up to be uh, facing the camera kind of too much Oh yes, turn that off. Put the this back down to nothing. So I don't want the crease because I want to see. see this being an issue later when uh, we're getting to the point of like see you remeshing and everything to get our subdivision layers back Eyelashes are a little bit not exactly where I want them, but that's okay. We're not gonna obviously, like I said, we're not gonna dynamesh them in or anything like that. Because um, we're just doing this for a render. If I was doing this for print, then I'd have to merge everything together. Make sure there's a decent bit of thickness there and stuff for the print. But at the moment, which I will probably want to do eventually but when I again for anyone who hasn't caught the previous streams uh, I'm waiting on a my 3d printer at the moment so uh, I probably will want to go back in but when I want to actually print them I'll go back in and you know update them so he's 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 uh, print ready okay so Again, so you've got to make sure double C. There you go. It's inside out. So something to be wary of. So we'll just add a few subdivisions. to be more visible.
Uh, Sean, yeah, I'm getting the Photon Mono X, yeah. Dying to get it now. Start playing around, because uh, we have a printer in the studio, um, but it was kind of old by the time I got to it. A lot of different people had kind of played around with it and stuff, so by the time I actually got to it, like it wasn't in the best nick. Um, and uh, so like I couldn't get it, uh, a print out of it. Everything just came out destroyed. It was a resin printer as well. And I think like Dort had gotten in where the, the mirrors and the lasers and stuff is. And once that happens, as far as I know, like you basically need like a full asbestos suit in a clean room to actually clean that out. So didn't get to uh I, I got to grip it was good because i kind of got the grips with the basics of like what you know how to cut up the print and so sort of, you know both to how to orient everything so that it prints right in the envelope and things like that but um i didn't get a, a single successful print out of it and i tried a good few uh, basically because no one was using it and I asked could I use it and they were like yeah do what you want with it so I was basically using it every day for ages for at least a couple of weeks more and you know yourself you're waiting on like you're waiting like comes up like 22 hours to finish a print or something and the next day you go in and check it and it's just a shambles it's like ah oh, to do this again painful Gary is saying, hi Paul, I'm not very good at learning from tutorials. Can you recommend any virtual online class for beginners? Um, I know Dylan Ekron has done a bunch of like just tutorials that are, sorry, not tutorials, like just courses, but I'm not sure of any other other than the obvious one, which is Shane Olson's um, 3D character workshop. Um, so, I mean, if if you need something that's a bit more into like directly interactive, that's probably, I can't think of anything else that really fits that as well as Shane's. Um, I think I could be wrong. I think Pablo Muniz has some courses as well. Um, I'm not super sure because, like, for me, I was always fine with tutorials. I was like, kind of, I never did like three D courses or tutorials or any or sorry courses or anything like that because I kind of learned a lot of bit of the of what I know from doing two D. Um, so I'm not super familiar with all the 3D courses. I watched a lot of 3D tutorials, but that was more to learn software. Um, so I'm probably not the best in the world to ask about the courses, but I, as far as I've seen, um, if you're starting out in ZBrush, you want to learn about sculpting and how to use the software, and especially if if you're you're better off in like a course type scenario rather than tutorials, um, even if you're into tutorials, Shane Olson's course that so three D character workshop. I can show a link in. Um, and Shane's great. Let me see. Workshop. Anyone really that's starting out in ZBrush. Um, as yeah, there you go. So, I'll leave the link there in the in the chat for you. So you have the photon s what's what's it what's it like is it good are you enjoying it is it 
Do you have any issues with it? I, I, something that I really wanted was a, a decent sized printer that I didn't have to, to avoid having to cut up too much. And also, because I don't want to be printing like tiny little things, I'd like to be able to print something, you know, they can re something sturdy you can hold in your hand. Um, so I didn't, I know it's probably recommended to start on something smaller, uh, AKA cheaper. But I was like, screw it, go hard or go home. At least it was something like when I, I learned to play guitar years ago and that was my mentality. I was like, I could buy like a crappy guitar for 50 quid um, and learn on that. And that way, if it all goes Pete Tong, you know, I only lost 50 quid. But then I thought, but if I buy something a bit more expensive, it will it will mean the the thoughts of losing. Well, I ended up spending like three hundred and fifty, which I know for a guitar isn't like huge money, but um because I spent three hundred and fifty, I was like, well, I better learn it. I have to learn it now because I've put down. Otherwise, I'm just throwing away three hundred and fifty quid. And who wants to do that? So I'm just, uh, this is a bit, I could, I could like merge these on a different sub tool and all that, but we're just taking a handy today and we're just going to do it whatever way we like. So I'm just moving these sub tools up to the top and then I'll just merge them down. That's in there. I think. Hi Alex, no need for apologies, it's great that you could join. Yeah, Kev Dillon's saying there, Pablo has a brilliant course, so there you go, there's another good course. Oh, actually, I, th I think Matt Thorpe has done some courses. I'd have to double check that. Uh, I know he's done tutorials. Is it that you want, you know, kind of, oh, I'll do that one now. Split you. subdivisions to do that um yeah is it is it that you want like feedback or what is it about tutorials that doesn't kind of sit with you yeah see so i had subdivision or had a dynamic subdivision on that. So let's kill that. Add some subdivisions. So something, here's a little, this might help some is something I do is, uh, because I'm always like moving things in the subtool palette and merging some things. So I actually have control. So you can move up and down in the subtool palette by just up and down on the keyboard. 
and then control will actually just move it so if i i'm on this sub tool here and if i hit control and up it will shift it up so and usually control and down will shift it down but i have control down as merge down so i can just go down and say if i wanted to bring like this i can bring that up just on top of whatever sub tool i want and then hit control down and merge so for example i need this shift up or control up twice and then control down once and we're in just a little see a little thing yeah does it i've seen a uh, hopper sean saying um about shane's course there's a good few people i've seen both in the discord and through the streams as well a lot of people are in that course um and you know i know shane and he's a great guy gr really good uh teacher and really good artist so um yeah i mean that's really the one to go for i think Um, Andrews is asking, can you demonstrate how to cut holes? Do you mean for printing? Is that what you mean to, to have a, like a drain hole? And then uh, Adam, Hi Paul, this is a is this a working stream or learning as well? Yeah, it's it's both. It's casually working and learning, so you can walk along with me and you know if anyone has questions and I can answer them, I will of course oblige. Cheers, Martin. Um Canada's asking how do you keep the surface so clean so that's you can see there that I'm merging the different uh, sub tools now you can see the way they're different here they're all different pieces so it's about keeping the subdivisions low Um, I use dynamic subdivision like you can see here dynamic subdivision and then at the point where I want to get all this stuff merged together which I'm gonna do now so you can this is a this is a key part of this kind of this workflow is getting everything together so um I've mer I've now given them all subdivision levels so that they're they're high res or you know they're at the the appropriate resolution that they're that I can um now they're all smooth and I can um weld everything together and because i kept things in lower subdivision levels i was able to control the surface much easier the things like all smooth work easier i can just move individual uh, polys if i want or edges so i'm able to control the surface really well where if i use dynamesh from the beginning it's so dense it's near impossible to uh, keep that kind of clean edge by using sculpting tools you know to be the same way the same way in sculpting you wouldn't if you're trying to sculpt a nice clean with clay a nice clean surface you use warm clay you don't use hard clay because if you use hard clay you have to push in a lot and you're gonna make bumps and it's near impossible to actually with your hands like go in and push out and get the whole surface perfectly even um it, you know you'd either have to just let it completely harden and then almost like foil it or um you keep it nice and warm and that way you can it's 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 much more malleable and you don't have to push in all these little pieces anyone who's sculpted tried sculpting with clay before will know exactly what i mean um this is if you like the the early stages like 
some of this workflow comes from because um, like I never I guess it comes from like traditional um, experience and then applying that in digital so it wasn't like I learned to draw and paint and sculpt before I ever did any sculpting in ZBrush and um, now it's a good while now that I'm sculpting in ZBrush so obviously I've developed a lot more now in ZBrush because this is the thing I do mainly now uh, okay so um, yeah so I, I started with the Dynamesh kind of method and I found it wasn't getting what I wanted so I started to think about it like the same way I would with clay and stuff and even with clay you don't you take pieces and you might make it in your hand and then you attach that on you know you don't just sculpt an entire head by chiseling it straight out of the lump of clay at the beginning so it's the same principles all right so so there's two ways we can do this we can dynamesh so we can make this put the resolution pretty high and just dynamesh it and that works that will that will do the job yeah and just know just if you want to cut a hole for a figure oh um i'd use the live billion probably to do that you could also just use a mask in Dynamesh. Um, so you could just like and just drive in a hole. It's just something like that you want it then yeah. Keep it simple. So this is all one piece now. As you can see. Um, which is all I need. And again, I could have used the Z Resh or sorry, Remesh by Union. Um the thing is and Remesh by Union is great, and as I said, if there's anything close, Dynamesh, if it's not high res if you don't put the resolution up high enough. Um, it can often <clears throat> um, weld things together that are just close not necessarily touching which you don't actually want like for example if this was too low it might have welded that gap for example or in here uh, which is not what you want but um, it, it's not an issue with this particular piece so um, I've got Dynamesh just there all I have to do is just hit it so why not um, and at this point I can actually smooth the creases here at this stage if I want generally I'll just do it at the if I bring this up like I can start to take the sharpness out of the some of the edges some of the edges I want that sharpness but like generally it's worth just kind of because you don't want like razor sharp edges really on anything and uh, it doesn't doesn't render well did i just squash the head yeah i thought it was the perspective or something for a second Um, and so that's I like to just go over it real quick with the smooth and you can see because it's super dense it's not going to lose any volume or anything it's just taking those sharp edges out and now 
even here i'm not going to go in and start sculpting into this i'm going to duplicate that head you can see i've hidden everything else by just if you whatever you're on you've got selected if you shift hold shift and click it it will unhide everything or shift click it and it will hide everything so i just want my head and the duplicate I'm going to go back to the original head because it's got some history there, just in case. Um, and a duplicate, and that way I can now... So this is the head isolated. And uh, do a bit of... This is always a little bit of trial and error just to see what works best uh, in terms of Z-remesh. So I'm just Z-remeshing this topology back down a little bit. And... Uh, that will give me my that what I'm aiming for is my lowest by subdivision one, and then I'm gonna dynamic or sorry subdivide a couple of times. After that, you'll see now in a second. I'm gonna give it too much in one go. Um, so Gary, I like the live classroom discussions with feedback and critiques with uh, participation from other students. Yeah. I mean, watching watching um, artists walking live is kind of close to that, so at least you're in the right direction. Cabell's asking how uh, to make the clothes, so we might see can we touch on that in this. Alright, so that's pretty nice actually, that worked out way better than I thought it would. I thought this area here was going to cause some issues, but that actually hit the nail on the head. So that's going to be now my first subdivision level. You can see like if I use smooth, I can smooth super easily. Where you can see me using smooth with the same intensity on the Dynamesh and nothing was moving. Um, so that's good. So that's going to be our lowest subdivision. And now I'm just going to subdivide a couple of times. Let's go. Yeah, let's go to five. We'll do this. And then down to project. And because, as you can see, the two heads are overlaying each other here. So we're just going to go down to um, project all. Or as you can see there, I have a shortcut to control all shift Q. Again, I know I explained this before, but control alt shift. I use control alt shift for a lot because I just use that control alt shift and then a different um, letters because control alt shift um, is not. A, there's there's no pre there's no previous shortcut keys in ZBrush. Uh, at standard that use control shift and alt so it means i'm not overwriting anything uh, it was actually something i picked up from uh, my old supervisor stefano um, stefano dubai not a great sculptor um, He was working in Disney before I, I walked with him on he he'd worked on uh, Big Hero Six and Frozen and Wreck It Ralph and uh my first day, my first studio, my first industry job, I was sat right next to him. So you can imagine. That was that was handy. Learn a lot from him. chat there please oh, this is yeah this is doing this thing um 
Saskia notes, Hi Paul, loving your character. I was wondering about your experience, thoughts with drawing. I've often heard 3D character artists say practicing 2D is beneficial to understanding shape and form. So, um, I'm not sure if you've caught any of the previous streams or anything I did, Saskia, but that's definitely something that I uh, I peddled that a lot. Like, because I was a 2D artist before I ever did any 3D. Uh, like I spent a lot longer as a whole doing 2D um, than 3D and the principles are all the same you know anatomy and as you say their shape and form and um, design and um, shape language they're all sculpting and drawing share all of those things so um, that's they, they they literally as soon as I started sculpting once I got the hang of ZBrush I immediately started to be able to sculpt at like a pretty decent level because I already knew all that stuff so they definitely definitely translate across and something that um, I recommend for a lot of people when they want to start sculpting like there's a lot of people who uh, aren't, aren't necessarily artists and then they see ZBrush and they think it looks like something that they could be really into and so they want to try to get into ZBrush but they haven't got a lot of experience you know drawing or anything like that beforehand um, which is can often be the case as opposed to someone who like drew since they were a kid and always did and then they got into ZBrush or maybe they were they learned some modeling in like a gaming course in college or something and then they got from there into which is a bit more technical got from there into ZBrush um and for anyone from that end of it that didn't like draw or anything before something that i highly recommend is um life drawing classes if you can do that is um something that would really be helpful that's something i did for years and um my drawing level and understanding of anatomy and form uh like quadrupled at least um especially if you can get a good life drawn teacher that is super super helpful all right so you see now now we've got the same head so we're on this one press down now we're on the other one so you're exactly the same except this one doesn't have any subdivision levels so we can delete this make sure this is so because i did this when we did the, the zbrush masters um episode and i deleted the wrong head now luckily i had a previous one that i made but i deleted the one with the subdivision levels which would have meant i'd have to go back in and do it all again um yeah so now you can see here's the same head same detail except now we've got subdivision levels and we can smooth things and we can still move things around all that good stuff Uh, Sean do you mean who's the guy you mentioned before do you mean Stefano I, you can see is I put his, the link to his art station or is it someone else I don't know if I mentioned someone else okay yeah Gary so you're saying there uh, watching you guys are great but everyone is too fast i can't follow you but i will check out the recommendations yeah so that's something i was only thinking about the other day so something that everyone should consider when they're learning anything is you know like for example like i've thought about doing a course exactly like that i'm not really like as much as i'm not against watching tutorials and learning that way um i'm not really into I've, I've thought and thought about making tutorials and um, it's just not something I, pro I maybe still will at some stage but it's just not something that really excites me is the idea of making a tutorial um, but something that I would be a lot more interested in 
is um doing a course where I have like actual you know um whatever live streams directly with the the students or that kind of thing and then that led me to my point here which is like who would I teach because um you can't teach everybody because not in one go at least um because for example you might have one student who knows zbrush inside and out but they want to learn something more about sculpting and then in the same class you've got someone who does not know zbrush and doesn't even know if they need a whack on you know what i mean i've experienced that i remember doing a concept art course years ago and like i was drawn and painting for a good while at that stage but and then someone in the class raised their hand and were like do we need to have a whack on to draw and paint in photoshop and I, at that moment i realized it was in the wrong class um but the problem was that the course hadn't dictated who should and shouldn't join so you'll see on some courses they'll do portfolio reviews first and they'll only accept in certain levels um because that way it can be tailored properly so that the people who do join get the right lessons um so so what i was thinking was and it's something that i was thinking about for myself as well um you, you kind of need to be ready for particular lessons like it's always good to get as much as you can like it's good to watch the likes of the live streamers and um you know it, it's it's almost like it's in a way it's kind of subconsciously going in uh, so i do recommend like doing whatever you can whether that's watching live streams or tutorials or um but something like something like shane's course i think would help a lot um and then but like there's always just time spent yourself just figuring out you know the uh, at least even say the basics of zbrush so that when you do a course that when someone says okay and now i'm going to dynamesh rather than thinking then you're, you're thinking oh okay i wouldn't have thought the dynamesh there instead of thinking what's dynamesh because now you've missed the whole point and you can't always expect the person to go in and explain every button and you know or you know so i'm doing all this and you don't know you don't understand how navigation works in zbrush and stuff so it's very difficult not not just it's difficult for both students and teachers it's really difficult for teachers because um you need to know like a musician you need to know your crowd um which can take a little while to figure out well it can take a little while to actually build the crowd and see you know get the feedback and so on so you can tailor as you go along to to kind of understand better what people want to see and then also what you want to make as 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 a creative like maybe more beginners tune in to your to, you know uh, to your live stream and yet but you want you don't want to just do tutorials on how to use zbrush you want to talk about sculpting and the kind of more advanced end of it then in my opinion you should do what you want to do because if you're if you're not then you're not going to do a very good job generally if you're doing something for everyone else and only everyone else you need to you need to enjoy it too um, uh, Sean so it's Stefano Dubai it's um, yeah you have his first name right so it's d-u-b-a-y 
So if you trot it into ArtStation, you'll find them. It's the only one that, that I've seen there. Um, PGMP, I would love to use ZBrush mostly for retopology and fix improved 3D shapes for 3D printing. I'm wondering if it could be suited for such task as a parametric software, and if so, what's your opinion? I would, um, yeah, it can't, yeah, it can be. Uh, yeah, well, actually, for something like that, like, there's an interesting way to retopo in ZBrush by using polygroups. I recommend looking that up. And if that's what you're looking for, um, then sweet. That should do the trick. Um, I mean, yeah, there's a, a lot of people that use it, even for like, you know, jewelers and stuff that are making jewelry in, in ZBrush for printing. Um, so absolutely, yeah. Now, I'm after seeing something I don't like. I don't like this. I don't like this. Because that's not what happens in there. It actually doesn't dip in like that. You see? I don't so I don't like that. So we're gonna have to do something about that. And this is the kind of thing, like you can't always catch everything. I wish I caught this before I did the whole dynamish thing, but I didn't. So you know what are you gonna do? You gotta just go fix it. That's and fixing it this way is gonna be a bit more, like if this was a separate piece, all I'd have to do is just pull the edge of that out. Wouldn't have to worry about this, where now you can see, it's a good example actually, so you can see. Uh, if I go in with the Damien standard and start going in here, Like it's pulling in directions that I don't necessarily actually want it to pull. Causing little valleys where I don't want, see that shape? Like I didn't want that shape. I don't want this angle here. Um, and it's just by nature what kind of happens when you start. So now I have to fight two shapes at the same time, if you like. Which is a bit of a pain. So I hopefully, now, because I Z remeshed and it kind of follows the edge flow a little bit, so you can see there. So that's wrapped around the nose, more or less. So I can use that mask now. And I want to make sure this is where I want to make sure that the shape is nice and clean. It has a nice curve to it. This is where your drawing comes in. Um, there's people who draw the nature of actually drawing a line. The curves and so on tend to be more at the forefront of your head because you're literally drawing lines as opposed to creating volumes in in sculpting and see that's that's icky so we have to go in and fix that but um you, you can think more about curves and all that jazz you can think more about the uh the flow of the the lines that your volumes are creating. That's super important. So what we could do So I'm 
pulling this out a little bit knowing that I'm gonna need to go check this from the front view now in a second just to make sure I haven't made that look crap. So what I can do there is on the lower subdivision. So sorry, I'm just masking that area and then control tap outside to flip the mask. Um, and then I can go down into deformation and you'll see down here inflate. Now I have inflate here because I use inflate pretty often. If I just do something like that. It's not too bad now. It's not perfect, it's a little bit of in there. But I can live with it. So now we're going in and now we're refining where we want those creases and where we don't want those creases. We're finding our shapes a little bit. I'm pull this in. And I'm trying to pull it in. Like I'm not pulling it in up here. I'm trying to pull it in down near the nostril. should be doing is just so everyone can see that's another thing about streaming is sometimes you forget your streaming not forget your streaming but like you know sure you guys actually want to see the full sculpt rather than me walking on the abstract thing oh hey Darko Darko's joined in Darko's in with us last week. I work with Darko and um, we work in the same studio. He's another one of the lead character modelers. He also does some super cool um, sets and props and he's one of those people who does a bit of everything. And he's very good at it. Definitely worth a look. Actually, I seen um, that actually coming back to you, um, what we were talking about before uh, that I think Gary, you asked was about um, the, the, the horses and stuff. There's something that I haven't really started yet. Um, it's not, it's, and I can't make any promises and maybe that's why I shouldn't say anything, but I'm gonna say it because uh, I'm an awful man. Um, there's a mentor type of thing that we could that I could be doing down the line, which would be a bit more one to one. Haven't worked out any of that yet. Um, it's through a, a specific company uh, that are quite early days, uh, and the reason that it reminded me there is because I know Darko has uh, signed up to it as well and um, and one of the other guys that I work with as well that I've streamed with in the past my own channel Gavin O'Donnell um, so you know there's potential there for that um, and Ga Gavin is doing s s uh, painting like map painting and uh environment design and that kind of stuff and he's super super talented as well so definitely if you're into that kind of stuff check him out as well gavin o'donnell another another ordinary irish man and um, but yeah so keep your ears to the ground because that's something that i might do 
as well and uh, Darko is part of too um, <laughs> yeah yeah mentor yeah I thought you were at <laughs> I thought you were saying will you mentor me and um, so you don't need a mentor there go um <laughs> but yeah mentor me yeah uh, I don't think they've I don't want to speak too much because I don't know where they are in the um proceedings so we'll leave it at that but it's some it's a potential thing for the future that I do find interesting. I've done some, like I, I did a, I did a mentor program with a French college where I mentored. A, they have like they get stu like the students do their final year program and, um, they get an artist who's like working in the industry at that particular task so she had another I don't know who the other artist was but she had another uh, working professional artist teach her some set uh, modeling stuff and then they asked me to help her with making characters she did a great job um, I was chuffed with her but it's actually that's that's it, it's something that I love to do like even this like just sharing information with people and uh, I really enjoy doing it um, and I know Darko does as well. Darko does a lot of tutorials um, and that kind of stuff. Um, stick your, um, if you're still there, Darko, put your YouTube channel in the old link there or in the chat there for people. I've actually used some of them myself. There was a great one there for rendering. I wanted to have like, Darko has one of his tutorials is about just having a dynamic depth of field because you can set depth of field in Arnold but like obviously if you move the camera then you're, you have to move your depth of field and um, <coughs> Darko goes through a tutorial on how to set it up that no matter where you put your camera your your depth of field updates um, which I uh, checked out and began to use because it's super handy all right let's leave that for now so we're not sitting on it for too long and um, address this clothing thing a little bit so what I want to do is just lift the arms off the body a little bit because I don't want to Like go in and sculpt with a Damien standard to create a crease in there. I want an actual crease. I want an actual area where the between the sleeves and the the jacket itself. So I don't want to go too mental because I do want to pull these back down. So we're kind of this is like defining how thick his arm is at the elbow basically. I don't want to go nuts. Something like that. I will want a loop. It'd be nice to get a loop. That circles that. It shouldn't be an issue. We can just uh, when we after we dynamesh and everything, we can or we can um, we can. I'll use the remesh by union on this one just to show the other method, and that will keep actually. It's a better idea because it'll keep the polygroups, and then we can zero remesh by polygroup, which will give us a loop around the arm where it's meeting the body, because the body and the arm are two different groups so that's what we'll do so something like that will do us and let's just dust yourself. so the intention there is just to lift them so we can dynamesh everything together then when we have a loop around we have um, edge loops around that arm we can just mask out that arm and pull the the arm back down there and all will be well. It's bothering me a little bit. It's a bit too long. So I'm going to just take this down. No shishi. Yeah, clothing today, yeah. That's 
because you asked earlier I think Chris right about the clogging so I'm gonna so I wanted to fit it in so I'm gonna have a look now so We're already there. We're not going to do the feet. Yeah, we'll do the legs. See there in the right that I can move stuff around pretty fast. So let's do this. So turn symmetry off, hit W for our transform, go into the settings here, and over to remesh by union. Let's see what that does now. Similar to Dynamesh but different. So you see it's it's welded everything together and it's left an edge between it hasn't it keeps the topology of each mesh as is and only affects the in-between and just stitches them together where dynamesh evaluates the entire surface and does a whole new mesh essentially like it's completely different topology across the entire mesh to uh, get the, the same thing. Um, Chris, I asked in the last stream. <laughs> sorry, sorry, brother. Uh, we just hadn't got to that point yet in the last stream. Because um, I like to get the, you know, you want to make sure that your shapes, it, it's better to make sure that your shapes are all working correctly um, before adding the clothes like the body underneath is the right shape and then when you add the clothes on you're adding the clothes that they drape on that existing shape so that's why we haven't done the clothes just yet so i don't we won't have time to like finish the clothes necessarily today because actually i want to do a little bit more uh, research into what kind of clothes I want to stick on but um, let's see the method at least on how we're going to do that so yeah so we'll duplicate do I duplicate that now so we duplicate and Z remesh and <clears throat> before we Z remesh so you can see we've got the different poly groups um let's go into geometry down to z mesh and then here you've got keep groups which is referring to the, the poly groups so we click on that uh we'll see what it does with this number it's it's low so it might mess something up but we'll see so we've got keep groups on so it's gonna z mesh and it's gonna put loops it's going to direct the loops around those to keep those uh, polygroups, which is what we want because we want zero mesh to give me a loop. We want zero mesh to give me a loop around where the body meets the arm there, and either side of that. And that way, I can mask that circular loop around that, so I can mask out the arm entirely, and then I can easily just uh, shift that arm down. See, so I've got a different arm now. Not quite exactly what I was, what I would have liked, but you know that's okay. It's it's it'll do the job. Right, mm, that's not ideal because it does that. Why did you do that? Let's go a bit higher. This is what I meant when it. That's why it's a little bit low because sometimes you get stuff like that 
when you you can lose chunks of volume in areas which you don't necessarily want so let's go with let's just go with two and see so again I have a keyboard shortcut control shift and alt you see that same thing again and for for Z remesh I use Z because it's Z remesh it's the creative mind Um, oh, Dracula from Colombia. Cool. Hey, bro. Someone bit his belly, yeah. Maybe Dracula from Colombia. Yeah, look at the. Oh, could be better, could be worse. No, I'm not gonna spend too long. If it doesn't, if it doesn't, it's not perfect. It doesn't matter. We'll manage with it. Probably usually if I wasn't streaming, I'd sit for longer and try to get it a little bit more towards what I'm looking for. Oh, Alt Z remesh, yeah. Yeah, Stagger's just pointing out you can actually hold Alt and hit Z remesh, and it will use the it'll use a, it's a slightly different algorithm right as far as i know and uh so it'll give you a slightly different result so it's something you can try if your um z remesh isn't quite giving you the result you're looking for so we'll see what it does differently here ah look at hmm. you can see it's a little bit different but still having kind of the same no problems. I'll tell you what, I'll just let's just let's actually just to make sure that it works. Just so I don't get that crappy stuff here. We'll just put it up at 3.5, that way it'll cover it and whatever this spits out we're just going with. Famous last words. Uh, select from high from France. I hope I'll learn one more time. Hey select form. That's an interesting one. Um, yeah, that'll do us. Yeah, you can still see it's doing this weird stuff, but there's enough resolution there that's not going to give us too much trouble. And the idea is, look, we can select now. Just do that. Let's save. So I'm just using Control and Shift again, just to hide certain poly groups do that and then flip it and unmask it and now just control tap to flip it and just tap on the mesh a little bit oh, sorry. flip that then we can kind of pull it down you see now that's how I'll move it down but I want to keep it up for a minute So now that we have a, like semi, well, decent topology for what we need. It's not actually decent topology, but for what we need, it'll do the job. So I'm just gonna, so let's see, we have to make him a, he's gotta have a t-shirt with a collar, like a, a jumper over that and then like a Gansey job. Um, <laughs> a lot of people might, be wondering what I mean by Gansey. Gansey is it Gansey a universal thing? Is that an Irish thing? I don't know. Gansey like a like a, a jumper. Um, and I'm just saying job because that's what I always say. It's a it's a grand job. And uh, big old trousers up up, you know, halfway up his waist, halfway up his torso. So. What I'm gonna do here is use the slice tool, which is just in your in your in your brushes. It's around here somewhere. Slice curve. 
I'm just gonna cut that. See what I mean? Let's get something a bit, a bit more decent. Where's the feet? Ah, okay. Right, we'll do that. Sorry, actually, I wanted to... Oh, I forgot you. So we've got that other body now. Which, I mean, if you were done details and stuff, you could again go back in and do your... Um, subdivide and reproject the detail onto your own but like there's no detail in this so there's nothing really to project so we don't mind that so we can delete that one and now we've got something now we've turned that into something else that's easier to work with so this is going to be our body and then i'm going to duplicate that i'm going to cut across here And where else am I going to cut? I can actually just use the topology now. So now that the whole top bit is masked, we'll actually just shift it down a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, flip the mask. Control W will polygroup the mask and then just control shift. Sorry, let's select. This is the standard one, it's on select. Um, it's not flipping because it was using the slice curve. So I'll just hit that and um, click and drag to, to switch the selection around and then delete hidden. So this is where what we were talking about earlier, Gary, comes in. That may be, if you don't know ZBrush, that's gonna to be too fast. You're gonna be wondering, or if, especially if you don't know any 3D software. That's what I'm talking about, being, about being ready to do a tutorial, uh, or ready to do a specific course. Um, there's always a certain amount of time that you need to kind of put aside yourself to familiarize yourself. That's what I would recommend anyway. I don't recommend going, I wouldn't recommend, it's just in general going and paying for a course based on something that you know like barely anything about is not, not to say that you, you know barely anything but you know in general um, and then like there's obviously different levels of information that you're going to want to know like there's, there's going to be people, and it's always going to be the case, which is where the challenge comes in when you're teaching. Um, there's going to be cases, and that, but that's why I check the chat, is if someone has questions, they couldn't follow something, that I can try and address it then. But um, this is where you use your inflate. If there is something that I've done that's that you're unfamiliar with, then you can ask but there's gonna be people in the watching that are like yeah completely get what he did there and they're just here to kind of familiarize with like a workflow but they know what the tools do and then there's gonna be people that won't know how to do that which is actually control shift and just click on it um, and you're inevitably you're inevitably always gonna get a mix and there's, there's, unless you're doing like a specific course where you have like, if previously you went and checked people's portfolios and selected them based on their, it's the only way to make sure that you know exactly who you're talking to and you can tailor for that group. I tend to tailor, I tend to tailor for people who have a good understanding of ZBrush, like a decent understanding, don't you don't have to know it. You know, you, you know how to mask something, you know how to navigate, you know how to merge a subtool. And I'll still kind of explain it because I'm aware there's other people that 
may not know that stuff and i'll generally explain it as i'm finding it true just to not again not to waste the time of the people that do know or i try at least um it's a bit of a juggling involved but um and yeah because it's it, i don't want to just if i just talk about how to use zbrush that's that'll be like just talking to beginners because it's you know if you don't know how to use zbrush then it's not much point in talking to you about how to sculpt in zbrush if you still don't know how to uh, use the basic tools in it you know um, but obviously i want to talk about the actual sculpting itself and there's a um, there's a there's a decent request for that there's a lot of people that want to to hear that stuff so yeah just trying to strike the balance um Sean's asking if you are posing in a more extreme pose than this. Would you do it all in a pose first and get the character close to finished, dynamished, and then pose with the transpose master? So uh, that's a good question. Oh, I actually have an example. Well, something that's more applicable at least. That I can show you real quick. <coughs> As you can see, this guy is like his whole body's torn his legs are posed his arms are posed i know he's not like it's not like a spider-man pose necessarily but actually the same principles would apply uh get the basic shapes in uh i've, I've sculpted the head you know i've dimension sculpt the head uh but a, all of this stuff is um is dynamic subdivision is this yeah that's dynamic subdivision um pretty sure yeah so is that so a lot of this stuff is still like no detail or anything like that just just basically the forms and the shapes are in there did that, all of that in a pose and then pose them and like the, i did make some i noticed i did make some mistakes because i wanted to pose the hands which can be difficult um but i i went in and um I I had created a so because the topology in here is working pretty well I had made if you if you separate out a loop a poly loop you can run um a curve brush along the edge of a poly group and um, by just dragging along it and holding shift and it will run that curve all the way to the length of the curve of oh, sorry the poly loop and um, the the poly the the edge of the poly loop like an open edge so you know you can just duplicate looks so, okay let's just really quick so if i duplicate this and i want to poly group poly loop and now I want to use this delete hidden. So now I can use this. So now if I want to run stitching, so there's a stitch. Oh, I think this is not, no, it's not curve brush. Uh, I have, there's a stitching brush. Maybe not. Anyway, we'll just pick another curve and run it along it. Say curve tube. So you see, it's wrapped all the way around there, which isn't ideal. So all you have to do is just polygroup the edges and there you go 
so it will run along that curve and it will stop where you have the poly group where they have the a, a different poly group and um, so i had done that with stitching on it all the way around his glove and then obviously i had to pose it then and all these stitches were going all over the place and i had to just delete the stitches so i'll have to do that again so you know stuff like that kind of detail you don't really want to do um so essentially like once i get the clothes on this guy i can go into that whatever pose at that point um <clears throat> or even i could sometimes depending on how i'm feeling just pose the body and then just make the clothes completely in the pose and um, because i'm gonna you know it's not really a big idea it's not really a big deal to just get the general mesh um like you can see with the trousers like all i did was duplicate the body and cut off the top and bottom like it took a second just to get the general gist of it and at that point you might you're gonna go in and when you're sculpting uh, folds or anything like that you're gonna do that asymmetrically anyway so you could pretty much just pose that you could like pose the body there's no wrong answer necessarily but um yeah often you could just pose the body because that way at least if you've got the clothes on top and then you pose everything in t-pose uh using the t-pose mesh then you're gonna have cut through and stuff that you're gonna have to worry about so depends on the intricacy of the elements in your clothing as well like i i don't have a specific time where i'm like right now i pose it's always based on all right what's going to be i have to think of all the elements ahead of time that i have to make and then pre-plan how to how to do this well like i, I had one I remember early on doing a specific character where it was like the arms were holding uh, crossbows so I didn't make a T-pose because like, I sculpted it from scratch I didn't sculpt it from a base or anything like that um, I didn't do an A-pose I did I actually did the character with the arms bent up because both were all i had to do with one arm then is kind of rotate it out i know it's a silly example but it's just the principle of the idea um rather than because once you sculpt that arm and then you bell, bend the elbow you're going to get a load of like mess in the, the crease and re-sculpt the elbow and so rather than i just did that to begin with and then just moved it slightly so again i know it's kind of it sounds like a silly example but it's you know if i it's just a case of planning ahead for each character and what's gonna what's gonna be easiest and obviously the more experience you get with doing them the quicker you get at uh figuring that stuff out that said like there's lots of times where i don't think no matter how much experience you have there's always going to be first unforeseen issues that you might have to brute force and then yeah sometimes i have done i have uh, posed while they were still in separate sub tools because then i can do whatever a little bit of shape on the arm and on the side of the forearm and the upper arm and then pose them and then still be able to move those forms with no worries and then dynamesh them in the correct shape so that's easier again but again it can depends sometimes it can kind of complicate making the different elements of the clothes so you really have to kind of judge it case by case and you're gonna mess it up a bunch of times and that's okay because you will learn from it uh, okay let's make this jumper so let's duplicate this again well okay let's do it a different way just for um, duplicate that now. so another way you can do it sorry I don't, don't need to duplicate that anymore, don't know. 
Another way you can do it is uh, with the extract. Just shift, control, and drag there. And now when you've got a mask, you can go down to extract under subtools and hit extract. You see it gives you a new mesh, except, and there you go. So I can use this. So I don't want to use, oh, I forgot this. Uh, Flip that hidden and delete hidden now, and I can delete up here. And what I can do here is take perspective off, slice. There, thereabouts will do me. Select. There we go. So it's easy mesh. That's too high. Should we we'll keep the um, groups again? Yeah, why not? That way, you see, like I'm not getting all this issue. I just hit zero mesh. Clean as you like. Now Z mesh again because we're low on subdivisions. Or sorry, we're low we're lowering the resolution of the mesh. So you can often get where you lose a little bit of volume. So I'm just gonna push that back out. Now we can do the different poly groups. Work smart, not hard. they say on gym walls. I always love those quotes. The walls of the gym. In an ironic way, not like a you know not in a sad way. I'll see it and think I'm gonna be better today. Just gonna giggle to myself. Okay. So let's see here. Um, so we'll just say that's his jumper. jacket thing Hey Sebastian Same job again.
that slice. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna slice across here. And get rid of that. Oh, we should have done that in a uh, orthographic view, which is without this perspective. Why you don't know? Anti perspective. Um, I'm gonna cut here off. So, um, uh, Popeye shape is great. Thanks, man. Uh, how often do you use Marvelous Designer? Very rarely. I've used I used it on. Um, the sculpt I did of Voldemort with the cloak. It's the only time I've used it for my own personal. It's the only time I've used it for for any work. Um, it's great. It's not I haven't. It's not about um it not being good or anything like that. Just uh, I generally, especially doing stylized characters, um, I like to sculpt it myself. Sculpt the wrinkles and stuff myself, for better or for worse. So you can see there, I've done that, and it's cutting the back off. So I just, oh, so I just do that, mask it, and polygroup it, get rid of it, or hide it, I should say. This guy should have an edge. So we're just gonna pull the edge out because this is what Siri Mesh wants. It just wants to see a surface. It doesn't care about what topology was actually there before. So if we do that now, it should give us an edge here. There you go, see. Catch you later, Sean. Thanks for dropping by. See mesh is making a liar around me. Let's try our old CV mesh. No, it seems to work fine, we don't use that. That's alright, let's do it that way. And um, just use an old smooth there to get the kind of roundness into that. I don't want to do inflate just globally everywhere, so I'm just using the inflate brush. And after, when we get these things kind of more or less into place, we can go into the T pose mesh then and Closer to where they need to be. And get the overall silhouette, just move everything together, kind of get the overall silhouette working with the clothes. Do with this getting a bit lower. Yeah, there we go. 
That is way too high there. This way we can move things around. Because really what we want is this is going to be sitting in his fist. So see with the lower amount of polys it's much easier to control. So I essentially want like a straight line almost. Unless it's like hitting his stomach there, which it is a little bit. We're just gonna shift that. this real quick just to show you you see you can control that curve because it's only a couple of polys so it's nice and easy it's not going to give me a lot of hassle and then another thing I can do is I can take this Mask it, edge loop complete, inflate, center that, move it back a little bit. Uh, grab that edge again and extrude. this bevel and let's do bevel left me no yeah okay let's just do it like this that's okay mask inflate This is basically poly modeling. But see, again, this is a clean way of going about it. So again, so we're just gonna go with, actually in this case, let's just insert a minute. Let's just insert one here. Mask that. Um, I break the symmetry and yes yeah, so we were just talking about that a minute ago it's it's a it's really a case by case situation you kind of just want to think about what you got to make Um think about the character you got to make and think about what's going to be easiest because sometimes it's better to go up to a certain stage and um, 
and even get a bit of detailing in before you pose and then sometimes you're better off uh, essentially blocking it out and then going straight to pose and then adding your clothing your details um, it's something that's changes depending on the circumstance and what you got to make so I'm going to go back out CDB. Hey, this looks great. Question for a beginner at 3D art. Would you recommend focusing more on stylized characters or start with sculpting realistic anatomy? Uh, if you like doing, um, if you enjoy doing stylized characters, uh, you know, there's there's definitely an element of you should do what you want to do for fun so that you keep doing it. If you don't want to always be practicing and only practicing because uh, if you're not having fun with um your sculpting then it's makes it way more difficult to keep it up and really that's the most important thing is that you continue to do it um that said to get really good at doing stylized characters you need to understand how real anatomy works for sure and so yeah you definitely want to do that um, so it's a case of splitting up your studying and then your like your study sculpts and you're just doing it for fun just indulging yourself because um, you want to do some sculpting you know what I mean you should really be doing both. Uh, you should be sculpting for fun because you want to do it. And, you know, sometimes as well, then you should be uh, doing some more practical studying kind of thing, like doing your anatomy studies um, in order to learn more about it so that your fun sculpts get better which in itself is fun well I think uh, you know you, when you walk away from something and you're, you're actually better now like there's such a cool feeling sometimes there's like days where it's like something just clicks that day and you, you literally feel like going to bed that night you feel like I'm actually a better artist today than I was yesterday it's really important so both the short answer. That's where something like I was talking about life drawing earlier. Something like life drawing is really good for that type of stuff. You know, you can learn a lot about your anatomy and stuff in that way. And then translate that into your sculpting. That's a good way of doing it. That way when you sit down to ZBrush you can just do what you want to do and you can use that knowledge you've learned. This should be like falling inwards now. lower 
the sweater thing. Because his collar is going to come out from there with his little. Uh, I don't know what that's called. The little card thing. That like priests and stuff have that go around the neck. You know, under their collar. With the white. in here for now. Could pull that up so there's another little like bulge there where his sweaters like tucked into his trousers. Cause he's old. We'll duplicate this. Okay, that's not gonna work. The mask won't work, so we'll just polygroup. Oh, we have it already. There we go. Delete that. Deflate that so it's underneath. And again, this isn't like how I make colors or something. This is just on the fly. Yeah, okay, so a collar, yeah, okay. I know it's underneath the collar though, the white thing that's underneath. A clerical collar, clergy collar, a Roman collar. Okay, yeah, okay, sorry. I did the common thing and I didn't read the one before. Yeah, so a collar, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll take it. Making his clergy collar. Um. So yeah, so I don't have like a process for making clergy colors. It's just like, you know, uh, like for those of you who've used ZBrush for a while, you'll kind of, you'll know what I mean. Like you, you just, you know the tools and you're like pretty quickly, you can be like, all right, I'm going to do this, this and this, then that will, that will do the job. But, you know, I could like go in there and like add a, a cylinder and squash it down and you know, do all that kind of stuff and it's just a lot of messing where I can just use what I have here. It's way quicker. Um, and it's just the, I, I I want to just clear or clarify that because uh, sometimes people ask me like, oh, is, you know, how do you make such and such a thing like something super specific um, or can you go through like a, something that I did on a stream like ages ago because I made a boot a certain way and like no idea what I did. Um, necessarily for that particular boot, you know, it depends. Uh, sorry, mask, that's what I wanted. This up. So here we could we could use our dynamic subdivision here just to get essentially a preview. So we'll just uh, crease and uh, then I'll 
dynamic subdivision, run dynamic. to do kind of like joke tutorials like that like clergy color process video <laughs> stuff like so specific no one's ever gonna care just for the laugh like a, a satirical tutorial channel but unfortunately I do not have that kind of time No, I don't actually, but it's way too much time. <laughs> I don't want to know the site to be so bored that I go and make an entire YouTube channel just, just for a joke. Um, I'm sure you know now. So, let's say... See, I've gotten caught up in the clergy color now. So I've got to pick that. Okay. So I want this to kind of... Do I? Yeah, no, I think I do. I want it to like line up. Yeah. Alright, so now we can duplicate this, get rid of just that. It's kind of too short or too long. Let's vote that one. So this is the color on top of his clergy color. Yeah, yeah, so there goes sign there. <laughs> so yeah, make a cylinder, put it around the neck done. Yeah, I mean, yeah, could totally do that. Um I mean it's one of those well it's like anything really it's there's more than one way to skin a cat you know if i had nothing else there to walk off then yeah i probably would just made a cylinder but in this case i just extruded it off the t-shirt or off the jumper here because the jumper that's exactly where it's going to be coming from so uh why not Um, but yeah in another case you may not have something like that particular circumstance in which case you have to use a different approach like a cylinder for example around the neck so there's that's what i mean by you don't have like a clergy collar process but if i do i will make that tutorial that is a tutorial that i will make and you all have to like it and share it and subscribe. I'll be very upset. Oh yeah, I wanted to, okay, so. Extrude. I'm 
Dove Edge Extrude. Such a good addition. My favorite tool in ZBrush. Is it, is it because you call it a tool? I don't know. It's part of a tool, really, I guess. Favorite tool in. What's your favorite tools? Put that. Throw that in the chat. What's your favorite tool in ZBrush? I think I'd have to go with Z Remesh. I mean, I hear it out loud, it's kind of obvious. Like it's not, you know, you kind of want. Always like to go with the underdog. It's not really the underdog. But it's just so useful. Actually, am I way over time? Probably. Yeah, 15 minutes over. See, this is what happens when you're making clergy colors, you get carried away. Okay. We'll leave them there. We've basically dressed them. And yeah, he's really starting to come together now, so I think he's going to look cool. Good old Reverend Green. So we'll leave them there for, for today. And uh, pick it up from here in two weeks and keep going with them. I'd like to, when I get the 3D printer and I'll go through all that stuff, so stay tuned for that. I'll, when I get the 3D printer and I haven't got my new machine yet, because a couple of people were asking, there's some delays with the 3080, so there's that. So, um, yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. I'm going to go to bed because it's getting late. And uh, I love you and leave you. I just let